Okay, folks, this is attempt number two. I got halfway through doing what I was doing and realized that I was wearing the headset to the wrong device. I'm now using my laptop because the computer's a piece of junk, as you may have noticed from some of the bad videos. I'm sorry about the video quality. Again, we're, we're getting so close, man. I just, I can't let bad equipment stop the videos from coming out. So I'm trying as hard as I can to keep this going. I just recorded <laughs> half of my mock draft with my computer headset on, so I had videos with no audio. So now I have the right headset with the right microphone to the right laptop. Let's start all over again, several hours wasted. By the way, there's a little join button down below if you want to help support what I'm doing, um, help to maybe get me some better equipment because this is becoming kind of a joke with, with what this little setup I got here. But um, we do have a really good mock here. Um, I'm excited. I, I used all the comments you guys had to try to get you the right uh, pieces for your teams. Um, again, the draft order after the, the playoffs is probably going to be a little bit off because I haven't seen any of the playoff games yet. But um, let's just let's get this started and hopefully there's no more technical difficulties. And again, please leave any comments that you have so we can further refine this. Otherwise, let's get started. With the first overall pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Jacksonville Jaguars select Trevor Lawrence, quarterback, Clemson. So, you know, I, I mean, look, it's it's locked in stone. Um, I would say it's boring, but I don't think Jaguars fans really care. I think they would embrace boring at this point. Uh, Trevor Lawrence, again, generational talent. Uh, Andrew Luck, Peyton Manning type of quarterback. So uh, not as a Packer fan, but as an NFL fan, I am pretty excited to see what you guys can do with him. And uh, the, the the future looks bright, man. It's going to be exciting to see what the Jaguars look like in the in the future. But we're taking Trevor Lawrence to the Jaguars at pick one. With the second overall pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the New York Jets select Zach Wilson, quarterback, BYU. Um, it's cool because it's it's getting exciting right now. Jets fans are all over the board in terms of a lot of you want to trade down. Um, several would take a quarterback, but then which one? Some of you would like Penny Sewell. Um, I just feel like this is probably the more likely scenario. Even if we if we get rid of like, well, logically you should do this or shouldn't do that. Let's be honest. You think. The Jets are going to pass on a quarterback at two. I just don't think so. I think you get a new regime in here. The first thing they're going to, going to want to do is get their quarterback. And and the biggest fear I have for the Jets is we don't get a quarterback. We draft, let's say, Penny Sewell. We improve Sam Darnold a little bit. We go from being, you know, the team we are to maybe like an eight and eight, nine and seven team, and we just don't ever get a chance at a quarterback, at least for several, several years. Or we draft a quarterback that's a mid-round guy, that's not very, or a, you know, a mid-first round guy, not very promising. Let's just be completely honest about what the situation is. Zach Wilson needs to be the pick here. I think. I mean, maybe if you like a different quarterback, cool, but I think we got to go quarterback. So I'm taking Zach Wilson at two. With the third overall pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Miami Dolphins via the Houston Texans select Penny Sewell, offensive tackle, Oregon. So the, the first time through this, when I had Miami at three, the first mock that I did, I did not take Penny Sewell because we took a tackle in the first and second round last year. Um, but I think that's kind of silly because this is uh, similar to Trevor Lawrence, a generational talent. And it's not actually that hard to figure out what we do. We, we've got one of the tackles that we took last year actually played half of his college career at guard so we're going to take hunt and we're going to slide him over to right guard probably or some one of the guard spots we're going to have sewell at left tackle and i think we improve probably three offensive line spots our left tackle becomes a better right tackle our right tackle is a improved right guard and obviously our left tackle hopefully is going to be one of the better tackles in the league so across the board we're improving our offensive line which is going to help our quarterback tremendously and again we still have another pick coming up so we can still do some more damage in the future so Penny Sewell to the Dolphins at three with a fourth overall pick in the 2021 NFL draft the Atlanta Falcons select Justin Fields quarterback Ohio State um, again, I, I haven't seen a lot of pushback on this. I'm assuming some Falcons fans don't like this, but I, it seems the, the general feeling that I'm getting from Falcons fans, and I can understand it, is it's time to just blow this thing up. And I've been saying that for a while. I mean, it, it's funny because the Packers and Falcons were on a similar path, right? Real good football teams. And then all of a sudden, like same year, they're both like, what is this garbage? It's like 2018, like the Falcons and the Packers are just trash. Um, the Packers blew it up, started over, and they're, on a war path right now and the Falcons have just been trying to keep the same thing going for a while granted the Packers stuck with their quarterback and that panned out well so something to consider but um, I understand the idea and I think it's it's several years too late of just saying you know what we need to just nuke this thing and start over and um, 
you know, Matt Ryan isn't necessarily Aaron Rodgers, so I, I understand the idea, especially considering, as several of you have said in the comment section, we're not going to be picking at four very often. Let's take advantage of it. Let's get a really talented guy, and he's getting trashed right now, Justin Fields, but I think some of it's a little bit unfair. He's a, he's a talented guy. We're going to take Justin Fields at four for the Falcons. With the fifth overall pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Cincinnati Bengals select Micah Parsons, linebacker, Penn State. So I've been forcing tackles to this team so much, so much. Um, I had to have them trade up last week with the Miami Dolphins in order to get Penny Sewell. I could possibly take a tackle, but the next highest graded tackle on my personal, it's not my personal board, it's my consensus aggregate board, is 15th overall. So, you know, I, I thought about trading back, but it, at some point it just gets to be stupid, right? Are we really going to give up a top five pick, like leave that out there just so we can trade back and get a tackle? We can get a tackle later, we can get a tackle next year, we can get a tackle in the... In, free agency, whatever. We have a top five pick. What are we going to do? And the fact of the matter is we have other needs. And I think linebacker is a massive need for this team. And, and you know, uh, Micah Parsons is a downhill animal, right? He's very, very good against the run. He's, he's just a physical dominant player. He's also very good as a blitzer. You bring him on, on some, some blitzes on occasion, you know, a third down, you bring him down after a quarterback. He's an animal. Um, maybe not the greatest cover guy in the world, but he's an automatic instant upgrade for this linebacking group. It is a need. Of course, we need help along the offensive line. Even if we had Penny Sewell, we would still need more help along the offensive line. We can't fix this with one pick. I think the right spot, the, the right pick in pick five with Sewell off the board is Micah Parsons. So that's what we're going to do for the Bengals at five. With the sixth overall pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Philadelphia Eagles select Jamar Chase, wide receiver, LSU. I think that there's only two reasons I'm not making this pick. Number one, Jamar Chase is gone. Number two, Devontae Smith moves up so far up the board that he ends up taking the spot, and that's possible. Um, but as it stands right now, Jamar Chase is not dropping even a little bit. I think some of the recency bias, a lot of people want to put Devontae ahead of Jamar because they forgot how dominant Jamar was. He didn't play in 2020. Um... I think Jamar Chase kind of fits that C.D. Lamb role, right? Uh, he's just a big, physical, great body control, great hands. He's got the speed. He's just, he's got all the, he checks all the boxes, basically, if we're going to be lame and cliche about it. Um, so I, I think those are the only two situations. Otherwise, I got him pretty well locked in. Um, right now, I, I don't know if I mentioned Jamar Chase. Number three overall on my board is Trevor Lawrence, Penny Sewell, and then Jamar Chase is number three. So this is a great football player, a massive need, a fantastic value. We're getting him outside of the top five. It's just a done deal for the Eagles. With the seventh overall pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Detroit Lions select Gregory Rousseau, edge rusher, Miami. I think the, the biggest consideration here outside of this pick um, is going to be whether or not we want to go with Trey Lance. I think with a, a, a similar to the Falcons, if we're going to bring in new staff, you may want to strongly consider quarterback. And, uh, you know, I've always said Stafford is so, somewhat underrated, but at the same time, is he really our future? Is he the guy? Can we envision him getting us over the hump anytime soon and um, taking us to a Super Bowl? So it really just comes down to what do we think of Trey Lance? What what do our new, our new staff think of Trey Lance? Do we want to go in that direction? Otherwise, obviously, our defense is the biggest need. And, um, I think especially along that defensive line, we just don't have anybody that's just a terror off the edge. Uh, there's some questions about Russo, but again, I'm just working off the board that I currently have, um, and that has Gregory Russo still as a good value right here. So it's, it's, it's the biggest automatic upgrade for this team is a really solid edge rusher. We're getting the number one guy here in the draft, Gregory Russo to the Lions at seven. With the eighth overall pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Carolina Panthers select Trey Lance, quarterback, North Dakota State. Um, it's another one that I feel is relatively locked in. I mean, again, it depends on your perception of Trey Lance. Do you like him or not? I think a lot of the Panthers fans are ready to move on for a quarterback. They, they had hoped to be higher up on the board so that they can get a better quarterback, but at uh, eight, you know, maybe Justin Fields will fall into your lap. I don't know. But I still think Trey Lance is a good value. If he's still sitting here, if, if the Lions don't take him, I still think it's probably the right thing to do. Um, again, it kind of comes down to, yeah, we can try to build a little bit. We can try to get more talent, whether it's, you know, whatever, tight end, offensive line. We could take pits. We can get some offensive line help, maybe, although it's not a great value. Defensive help. But um, 
again, if, if you like Trey Lance, you take Trey Lance. And I like him. I think he's a good fit. I think he's going to be sort of that, you know, we still have a new staff that wants to have their guy that they can work on and start to build around. And, and I think he's got a lot of great tools for this, this staff to build around. So Trey Lance to the Panthers at eight. With the ninth overall pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Denver Broncos select Patrick Sertan, cornerback, Alabama. Um, it's really tough for me in the Broncos. Um, I know fans hate when I draft a quarterback here. Fortunately, I, I wasn't left with that option. Defense, man, it just it, I think the thing that sucks is I looked at this team and I said, this is a great defense if they can just get this offense going. Fans don't want a quarterback. The offense didn't quite take off like I had hoped with Jerry Judy and, and K.J. Hamler, two of my favorite wide receivers in that draft. Not to say they can't eventually, but um, at the same time, the offense isn't really taking the, the step that I thought. The defense seems to be falling a little bit. You know, Von Miller's coming to the end of his tenure there. Um, some of these pieces aren't quite, you know, it's just like I, I, I felt like they were close and it feels like it's fallen away a little bit. Um, but at the end of the day, looking at corner, and this is the highest graded corner via PFF, If you, regardless of who comes back, who stays, who grows, all that, right now, who is the young, talented corner on this team? Who is it? I don't know who it is. So I, I want to get that guy. We have young guys. We have talented guys. We don't have both. Patrick Sertan, um, he was, I got the wrong stuff up here. I got some of his stats. If I can click the right thing for once in my stupid life. Uh, 66.5 passer rating. Again, highest uh, graded PFF corner and it's not as though some of these guys they have those big breakout years right um, and you kind of wonder was it kind of fluky because some of these guys have breakout years and then the next year they kind of fall off and it was just a little blip he's been doing this consistently for a while he's doing it at the biggest program in college football I don't think it's a fluke um, a bad day for Patrick Sertan was against Florida two receptions 60 yards and a touchdown and he had two pass breakups that's a bad day for Patrick Sertan so um Again, I, I think this is a defensive-minded football team, and we need to be dominant on the defensive side of the ball if we're going to succeed. And so we're going to get that lockdown corner that we desperately need in Patrick Sertan. With the 10th overall pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Dallas Cowboys select Caleb Farley, cornerback, Virginia Tech. I'm just going to call him Caleb because that's what it looks like. Um... Look, I know I'm, I'm treading on pretty dangerous waters here because Cowboys fans absolutely love um, Diggs, and I get that, and I, I was probably wrong to trash the guy a little bit. He was better down, this, down the stretch the second half. Obviously, 12 pass breakups. When you get the flashy stats like pass breakups, three interceptions, and all that, um, he's going to be very well loved. He wasn't as great as a lot of people make him out to be, 650 yards, six touchdowns, but still, again, down the stretch, very talented, tons of upside for him and all that. Um but at the end of the day, I want two. <laughs> that's, that's what it comes down to, right? I believe in the offense. That's the first thing. I, I don't think there's a terrible thing. I, I want to get Dak back. We need Dak. Um, the offensive line obviously isn't as good as it was, but it's still a talented offensive line. Um, Zeke is a freak, and we've got three dominant wide receivers. I mean, the, the offense should be, if we get the right staff in place, dominant. So I want to focus on the defense. We've got a good pass rusher. We could go in a couple different directions, but I'm looking at a dominant corner and saying, what's the worst case scenario? Diggs becomes a elite corner and what? Do I regret this because now I have two dominant corners? No, I don't. No, I don't. I, I'm, I'm excited because we have a dominant offense and you can't throw against us. So yeah, we're taking Caleb Farley right here at 10. With the 11th overall pick in the 2021 NFL draft, the New York Giants select Devontae Smith, wide receiver, Alabama. So I, I basically have Kyle Pitts locked in here for the Giants, but I'll tell you what, if, if uh, <laughs> Devontae Smith is sitting here, I don't think you can pass on him. I, I don't know. I mean, jump in the comment section if you'd rather have Pitts, and I'm sure some of you would, but um, I feel like this is a no-brainer, man. This is just a – this would be so exciting. And, and the thing that gets me the most excited, I heard somebody – I'm stealing this thought, but somebody had mentioned – I'm going to steal it um, – is it a coincidence – that Josh Allen took off as a quarterback when they went out and got Stephon Diggs. I don't think so, right? The Buffalo Bills have become what they are when they went out and found that guy 
that can be that piece for that team. And I've mentioned I like the Giants. I think the defense is, I mean, you, you need a couple pieces here and there, but overall it's a pretty stout defense. I think Daniel Jones is underrated. I think he's talented. He just doesn't have any weapons. Obviously the fumbles are a massive issue. The offensive line I think is really talented. They had some serious issues. Statistically they were garbage, but as you guys all pointed out to me, they got better down the stretch once you fired your offensive line coach. I love the pieces you have there. They just have to execute better, more consistently throughout the season. Man, you had a guy like Devontae Smith... I'm just saying, I'm not saying this is a Super Bowl caliber team off the bat, but I, I just, I love that. I love Devontae Smith to the Giants. If 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 Kyle Pitts is a uh, consolation prize, that's exciting. But um, this just, this gets me all jacked up. So best case scenario is Devontae Smith falls to the Giants. I think as a consolation, we take Kyle Pitts. I like the Giants sitting here. I think they're going to get a good player either way. With the 12th overall pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the San Francisco 49ers select J.C. Horn, cornerback, South Carolina. So, I mean, it's it's somewhat of a disappointment. I've, I've had it locked in for some time that they're going to have Caleb Farley. Sertan is obviously going to be gone at this point, but uh, Farley went to the Cowboys. But I tell you what, I think if, if Horn is gone, we kind of get into that same territory as the Bengals where it's like, look, we desperately need a corner, but we're not going to be stupid about this. We'll take somebody else that's a really good value. We'll get a corner later. Um, this isn't the consolation prize, though. J.C. Horn is a good football player. He's a big body, physical kind of guy. He's got that Richard Sherman presence to him. He's not Richard Sherman, but just big, physical, kind of a shutdown guy in in, uh, in college. Half of his games just about had zero receptions allowed. Only one game this season had 50 or more yards. Um, in that game, he had two interceptions and five pass breakups. So, you know, the one game you finally eclipse 50 yards on the guy, he just destroys you. Two interceptions, five pass breakups in one game. So, I mean, this this is, I'm not calling him a consolation prize. I mean, this is, this is a prize in and of itself. And again, the biggest reason for the 49ers needing this is there's going to be a mass exodus of corners. Even if we keep some of them, which I assume we will, there's still going to be a lot of bodies missing. And, um... We just need a young, talented corner, and I think we've got one here in Horn. With the 13th overall pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the LA Chargers select Christian Derisaw, offensive tackle, Virginia Tech. Um, I had somebody in the comments section mention the Chargers don't need offensive line because they have Balaga. Uh, I, I try to take into account all the comments as best as I can. I can't get on board with that one, my man. I just, I can't get on board with that. First of all, there are five offensive linemen, not one. Second of all, Balaga, as much as I love him, right? Packer fan, he's a good dude, all that stuff. Brian Balaga, Iowa, all that. Guy's 500 years old. So, I mean, we, we, we have to find an eventual replacement, but even so, we need another tackle. So anyways, it's nice to not have to trade back. I think at 13, again, 15 overall was the next highest graded tackle at, with Derisaw. I think we're in a great spot to be able to get him at a good value. He's just sitting there for us. I think it's just an, a no-brainer pick. And now we've got Balaga at right tackle. we got Derisaw at left tackle. I think we got a good tackle group. We're helping to build around a quarterback who showed a lot of promise. Still needs some more help. I would love to get some interior guys. We can get those in the later rounds. This is about as big of a no-brainer pick as there is. I mean, you got, um, let's see, Derisaw. Uh, he was actually graded out as elite as a pass and run blocker. Allowed zero sacks, zero hits, and just six hurries in his last season over with Virginia Tech. So extremely talented guy, and the Chargers should be very excited to get him here. With the 14th overall pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Minnesota Vikings select Quiddy Pay, edge rusher, Michigan. Um, I, 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 this is becoming a locked-in pick. We'll see how it goes. Uh, there's a good chance he could be gone at this point or whatever, but... Um, I think Vikings fans are a little bit more down, at least in the comments section, just trying to pick up on the vibe on the Vikings defense than they should be. I know it's real rough down the stretch there, but I, I, I think that was a team that was just kind of defeated. Look, I'm looking at, and, I, and I, look, you got safeties and corners and whatnot and, and guys that are returning. It's not like everybody that's good is returning and wasn't there, right? Your safeties were there. They weren't performing at their best. The corners were there. You know, Cam Dantzler was solid, but everybody else is kind of iffy. So I understand being down on them. But you bring Daniil Hunter and Pierce back, when you get that better defensive line and, and edge pressure, it's going to help your DBs and your linebackers a lot. So we're getting Daniil Hunter back, we're getting Pierce back, we're adding Quiddy Pay, so we have a dominant defensive line that's going to have Cam Dantzler back, who down the stretch was one of the better corners in football. We've got other young guys that are early round guys that are going to be learning and growing and ascending. We've got safeties that are still very talented, even if they're, even if they're not in their peak. 
And then on the other side of the ball, we have uh, best wide receiver duo in football. We have one of the best running backs in football. We have an offensive line that's not elite, but is is decent enough, and a quarterback that I think is very underrated. I, I just I know he makes some dumb mistakes, and I doesn't seem to be very liked <laughs> by his teammates. But I think he does a good job. He throws some really beautiful throws. I'm excited about the team. I just, I, you know, even as a Packer fan, as much as I look at them through green and gold glasses, I'm like, that's a scary football team right there. So I love Quiddy Pay. I love the fit. I know Rashawn Gary, um, he, when he came out and the Packers took him, was seen as sort of a Daniil Hunter kind of guy based on the way that he plays and that kind of stuff. I think he would have been a great fit. I think Quiddy Pay is a similar Rashawn Gary type of guy. I mean, he's not the physical freak that Rashawn was, but fantastic football player. Um, maybe even more NFL ready. He's not quite as raw. So uh, you put him in there with Daniil, and I just I just think that's a great, great fit for the Minnesota Vikings. So Kyle, uh, could he pay to the Vikings? Oops. With the 15th overall pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the New England Patriots select Kyle Pitts, tight end, Florida. Sorry for that little bit of a spoiler alert. Hopefully you didn't figure that one out. Uh, I mean, Look, this is this is stupid. Um, there's there's that running joke that the Patriots always have guys fall to them. I've had several mock drafts where that's exactly what happens. I don't know what it is. There's some kind of universal law that that talented guys have to fall. Kyle Pitts, as I've said, uh, he could go top ten, and I don't think anybody would bat an eye. You know, I by the way, I am allowing trades in this. It just everybody's just like, no, I'm good with this pick. It, uh, there are trades coming, but uh, to this point, everybody's just taking who they want. Everybody's happy about their picks. And uh, Kyle Pitts just fell naturally. Again, the Giants would have loved to have him, but Devontae Smith was there. 49ers um, would, well, no, they wouldn't take him because they already have a tight end. Chargers have bigger needs. They could take him, but, you know, again, you got a tackle there. The Vikings, they have a young, talented tight end. Not that you couldn't take another one, but, eh. Um, and here we are with the Patriots. So, again, it was just a natural fall for Kyle Pitts. And, um you know, you could say, well, somebody could trade up. No, not if somebody who doesn't want to trade back because they all like their picks. So, I mean, it just is what it is. And it's a no brainer for the Patriots. We're sitting back going, are you guys freaking kidding me? You let Kyle Pitts fall to us. He shouldn't have made it out of the top 10. But um, you've been with me the whole ride. This is this is how he gets there. So a great fall for the Patriots, a great talent, an absolute freak. And all of us can sit here and just roll our eyes that the Patriots got another great player at a way better value than they should. They still have a lot of work to do. I mean, listen, if this was still the Tom Brady Patriots, we'd all be breaking stuff. But um, at the end of the day, whatever they end up doing, this is a great pick for the Patriots. With the 16th overall pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Arizona Cardinals select Wyatt Davis, offensive guard, Ohio State. Look, everybody hates taking interior offensive line, but somebody's got to take this guy. He's a first-round talent. He's not just going to fall out of the first round because you don't like guards. As far as I'm concerned, I still feel like we're in the build around our, our quarterback kind of zone, right? I, I don't think our offensive line is that good. Um, I know I got crucified for taking a tackle last time because you guys supposedly have good tackles. Okay, fine, but the interior is not good. The wide receivers, obviously, you got one really good wide receiver, but you guys play a lot of five wide. You got one out of five, right? The running back is still kind of tenuous, so we still got a lot of building to do. So we're, we're going to try to fix the interior of this offensive line, which I think is, is universal. Even Cardinals fans would acknowledge uh, is a big need. And I know we can wait on an interior, but I'm telling you, this is one of the best available players. We can pass on him just for the sake of passing on him because we can get a fourth-round mediocre guard. But why? Why not just take a dominant guard? You think teams with dominant guards regret having them? You think Quentin Nelson is on the Colts and the Colts are like, oh, why did we take this idiot? Nobody's saying that. So Wyatt Davis to the Cardinals at 15. With the 17th overall pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Las Vegas Raiders will accept a trade from the Indianapolis Colts. The Colts will come up from 22 to 17. They're going to offer up a third and a sixth round pick. I know a lot of people hate the compensation I give up, but I'm promising you I'm doing my research on this. I've looked up historical trades. There's only one trade that I saw that was kind of close. To, I think it was from 21 to 17, and it was a third and a sixth. So close enough compensation for me. Uh, if you want to call it a third and a fifth, whatever. But generally, this is what we're talking about. So anyways, with the 17th overall pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Indianapolis Colts select Mac Jones, quarterback, Alabama. You know, having watched that game, I, I said the Colts would beat the Bills. That was my prediction in that game. Yes, I did watch those games. Um, 
And really, it wasn't because the Bills or the Colts are a better team. It's just it was a great matchup for them. Um, it's a really good running team up against the Bills who struggle against the run, all that kind of stuff. But ultimately, when I was watching that, I was just disappointed in the quarterback. I really was. Some of those throws were way off target. Granted, there was a lot of drops and everything, but you know that you missed a wide open guy in the end zone for seven points. There were several other throws that were just not on target that just should have been. It's a talented team that is on the ascent. Uh, the defense is talented. The pieces there are talented. The run game is going to be so special in Indy, but we got to have a good complement. And at the end of the day, Phillip Rivers is not the long-term answer. As we're sitting here, we don't have a lot of good quarterback options. Kyle Trask is falling down the boards as we speak. Mac Jones is the next available real option here. And with Washington on the board and the Bears on the board before we pick, it's now or never. And so when the Raiders start calling around, because I honestly just didn't really like the picks there, um, it was kind of a no-brainer for me. I mean, the Colts could go in different directions, but if we're going to like kind of go all in with this team that I think is kind of ready, right? We, we need a couple things, but they're on the verge of being special. Um, now it's now or never territory. So we're going to pull the trigger. We're going to take Mac Jones out of Alabama. With the 18th overall pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Miami Dolphins select Jalen Waddell, wide receiver, Alabama. I mean, it's, it's almost impossible to have a bad draft for, for Miami. Every single time. I think the last draft was probably my least favorite. But, I mean, we just got Penae Sewell to be our left tackle. And we added Jalen Waddell, wide receiver out of Alabama, who already has camaraderie with our quarterback. It just... Man, it's going to be exciting. It's, it's an exciting time to be a Dolphins fan. Not only do the, are the Dolphins already playoff contender type teams, uh, they were right there on the verge of getting into the playoffs, but we've got so much potential in this draft. Um, I just think it's going to be something special. I, I, I think Penny Sewell, this kind of confirms for me that was the right pick. I mean, we're not taking Jamar Chase. Why should we trade back and do what? Take a different wide receiver? We're going to get a wide receiver. Um, I just... I. I it's a no I don't know how to even explain this. I mean, this is this is beautiful to me. I'm, I'm in love with the Dolphins draft. With the 19th overall pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Washington football team selects Rashawn Slater, offensive tackle, Northwestern. Now, if Mac Jones was here, would I take him? The answer is yes. I know we had a flashy little postseason there and all that stuff with, uh, what is it, Heineke or whatever. That guy ain't it, man. He's 30 years old. He's been for a lot of teams. He's played some terrible football. He had two really good games for you guys, uh, week 16, and then this past week. I, I just looked him up. He, pretty impressive, um, the little bit he's had. But he's not your future. Um, either way, if, if we're not talking about quarterback. Um, Rashawn Slater is, is, I think, offensive tackle is the next best option for us. Um, at some point, we're going to be looking to get a new quarterback. Maybe we roll. With, because we're not getting a quarterback, let's roll with Heineke. I, I really hope I'm saying his name right. It's such a weird name. But at the end of the day, it's not going to be the solution. We do have a good defense. We're going to build up the offensive line. We've got a running back. We have some competent wide receivers that I like. I think it's kind of similar to, uh, who is it, uh, Jacksonville, where I like the wide receivers, but we could still use that like elite number one guy. But I think at this point, I want to build up the offensive line. We'll check, uh, check back in on wide receiver in round two and see how that goes. Um, I actually think Washington can be pretty close, but we got to, we got to figure out the quarterback situation. That's the biggest thing. And until we can find that out, we're just not going to get there. But, um, I don't think there's that much else to build on. I mean, we, we, I want to get an offensive tackle. I want to get some wide receivers, maybe a tight end. But, uh, once we get that quarterback, I think we could be a lethal football team. With the 20th pick in the 2021 NFL draft, the Chicago bears select Samuel Cosme, offensive tackle, Texas. Man, I, I, it really feels like quarterback or bust. Um, there's a lot of rumors that they're going to be bringing back uh, Mitch Trubisky. Look, I mean, I, again, I haven't seen the games. You guys have seen the game. This is a great audition for him. I don't, I don't like the Bears' odds against New Orleans, mostly because I respect New Orleans a lot. Um, you know, their, their defense and the amount of pass rushers they have that are going to be putting uh, Trubisky under assault. But hey, I mean, if, if there's any chance of him coming back, he's got to make a push here in the playoffs, and it starts with New Orleans. So we'll see what happens. Either way, we don't have an option here. So the best case scenario, I think, for the Bears is that Mitch actually is a good, <laughs> is a good quarterback, which I don't think is the reality. But um, 
if he can put on a show, we can kind of build around him and see what happens. Either way, we need to get some help here. Um, I think we need wide receiver and offensive line help desperately. So Samuel Cosme is a great uh, value here at 20. So we're going to take Sam Cosme. I mean, he's a guy that's been going early. I mean, sub 15 for a long time. So great value, great football player. It's still kind of depressing because you know this team is floundering and all the while the defense is going to slowly start to erode and that is our strength. So you want to just have this desperate Hail Mary, like just get us a quarterback, give us like one more wide receiver. We got Mooney, you know, maybe we're going to lose Robinson. I don't know, but if we could just hang on, right? Um, just find that quarterback. Maybe we'll get lucky in free agency and, and you know, there's rumors swirling. I don't think any of them are true, but... We'll see what happens, but again, at this particular point in time, the best I can do is get you a tackle. And I know that doesn't fix our season. I know that doesn't fix our team, but it is a big need. I think it's the right thing to do. We'll take Sam Cosme for the Bears. With the 21st pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Jacksonville Jaguars select Rashad Bateman, wide receiver, Minnesota. Um, look, I mean, we, we got our quarterback, and Rashad Bateman is sort of the you know, in terms of sort of those top tier wide receivers, I feel like he's kind of the last one available. I mean, there's there's other guys, there's other talented wide receivers, but I feel like there's a bit of a drop off. There's bigger questions. Rashad Bateman is a, a big enough guy. He's got all the tools. He's got everything you should want. And again, we got to build around Trevor Lawrence. Uh, offensive line is not out of uh, consideration here, but I, I feel like based on the board and where it's at, you know, we'll, we'll continue to address needs along the offensive line, possibly running back, um, in the later rounds, but for right now, we got a top tier wide receiver. Let's just get that combo going. Trevor Lawrence, Rashad Bateman, see if we can kind of get that one two punch going. And um, I mean, I'm, I'm ready to start dominating, right? And, and, and the other thing is, I, I really like, as I just mentioned, our wide receivers as complementary sort of number two guys, you know, LaVisca Chenault and DJ Chark. I, I feel like the physicality and, and whatnot that they bring is really going to be a great asset. But I don't know that we have that true elite number one. And so if we can get Rashad Bateman to be that and have some good complimentary guys on top of just having an elite quarterback, and I'm excited. With the 22nd pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Las Vegas Raiders back on the clock select Joseph Asai, edge rusher, Texas. So, I mean, the, the trade worked. We didn't get a massive haul of picks, but a third-round pick is, is, is big, right? We could definitely use that. Sixth round is something. Um, and ultimately, we got the guy we wanted anyways. I mean, Joseph Asai, we, we want a better edge rusher. Um, I just think up front, we have a lot of issues. Uh, we got a couple different areas we can address. Offensive line is getting much older, but I think the defensive line right now is just sort of, um, there's, there's nothing there that you love, right? You might really like uh, like one or two of the guys that are there or, or feel like there's some potential there. But who's the guy that's just dominant? There just isn't a guy. So uh, I want to get that guy, and hopefully we can get it in Joseph Asai. And, uh, again, I, I just think that this was a great move, if nothing else, to be able to pick up compensation and still get the guy that we want. So Joseph Asai to the Raiders. With the 23rd pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Cleveland Browns select Jeremiah owosu Koromoa, linebacker, Notre Dame. I mean, I just... I love the pick because, first of all, Koromoa should be gone by now, and he's not. Uh, the fact that he's a linebacker and some of the other needs and all those things have forced him down a little bit. Um, Cleveland, you know, they're right on the verge. The, the, the weird thing about them is that they're so kind of inconsistent. The offense will put up 40, and then they'll put up 14, and the defense will allow 14, and then they'll allow 40. Um, but I think getting a real talented, versatile two-way linebacker that's going to help you in the run game as well as be a good coverage linebacker can kind of add that frustration factor that really good defenses have where you just can't get going, right? We can't run the ball. We're having a hard time kind of getting the ball to our tight ends, and we're, we're just we're having a hard time. Denzel Ward's a good corner. We still have a good pass rusher. Um, the components are there, and I, I think linebacker is that one component that's been kind of missing. Um and so I, it, it's not the fix-all, but I think it's it's kind of a no-brainer pick for me at 23 to the Browns. With the 24th pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Tennessee Titans select Carlos Basham, edge rusher, Wake Forest. I mean, I, I beyond a no-brainer, man. I, I just I love the Titans. I love just about everything about the Titans, but that defensive front is just not good enough. I mean, Simmons is great, but we have nobody off the edge. I also want to get bigger and more physical off the edge. I feel like we've dedicated too much of our resources 
to these small speed bend guys, you know, the 245 pound edge rushers, we got to get more physical up front. I mean, if we're going to be that team that is a smash mouth team on offense, um, we have to be able to match that on defense. We, if, if we go up against a team like the Baltimore Ravens, and again, I haven't seen the game, but the, the biggest thing that's upsetting is it's the number one rushing team against the number two rushing team. And um, I feel like it's a mismatch when you've got the number one rushing team, the Ravens, going up against the Titans defense because they just don't have the bulk, right? I mean, you have the Baltimore Ravens, and again, I might sound stupid if, if Tennessee just whooped them, but um, they're, they're putting six, seven offensive linemen on the line of scrimmage, who's gonna who's gonna match that? So, I want to get better at, in terms of pass rush, but I also want to add a little bit of bulk. So we're gonna bring in Carlos Basham out of Wake Forest with the 25th pick in the 2021 NFL Draft. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers select Davion Nixon, defensive tackle, Iowa. I mean, it, the one thing I could think people would say in regard to not liking it is the fact that they have a good defensive line. But again, I'm not drafting for 2020. I'm drafting for 2021. We, we're going to have several people that are leaving. And Dominic and Sue may not be here. Um, I'm not sure who's getting signed and who's not. If you have some insights, drop them in the comments. But um, yeah, I, I, I like our defensive coordinator. I like what he's doing with our defense. I think we got some great things, but I don't want to lose that. And a lot of the guys that we have that are doing a good job are older veteran types. And we need to get some of our younger guys, some 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 of our guys, right? We, we've got a new guy, a new defensive coordinator, new head coach coming in and using a bunch of guys that have already been here. Let's get our guys that, that fit what we want to do and keep this fire stoked up, right? I love the defensive line. I love the pressure. Nobody's running on the Bucks, right? Real dominant defensive front. And again, I don't want to lose that by uh, allowing guys to walk and not replenishing that. So Davion Nixon to the Bucks. With the 26th pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Baltimore Ravens select Terrace Marshall, wide receiver, LSU. Um, you know, again, I mentioned number one rushing team. Titans fans are probably mad about that, but, I mean, statistically, that's what it is. You guys run more than everybody, more attempts, more yards, and more yards per attempt than anybody. So um, I understand possibly looking at this and saying, what, what do we need it for? We like to run the ball. Let's just focus on that, and we, we do well enough as a passing team. Fair enough, especially with the tight ends that you have and all that, but I still want it, right? I still think that, I mean, your best wide receiver is, he might get beat out by a, a handful of number twos on other teams. Um, that's no disrespect, but I also want to find a good compliment. Hollywood Brown is good at what he does, and I think if we can get a good X receiver, a good physical, on the line, beat this guy in press coverage kind of guy that draws that attention like Terrace Marshall will bigger body guy he's going to go up against those number ones Hollywood Brown can be that kind of guy that he's meant to be which is just that big play threat I mean you you can use him to just be he doesn't have to be your everybody every down every reception kind of guy right he doesn't have to be that guy so we can allow him to be sort of that Deshaun Jackson figure who has one two big plays that dictates to the defense hey we we have to respect his speed and he's a, still a talented wide receiver he's not just speed right so uh, again I think you have that dynamic of the two wide receivers and the tight ends and the fact that we run a lot and it just gets to be you can't stop them you're almost there as it is. I think 2019 was kind of can't stop them. 2020, not quite as much. But again, add in that wide receiver and you get back into, I don't know what you do to stop the, the Ravens territory. With the 27th pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the New York Jets select Rondale Moore, wide receiver, Purdue. So unlike the Ravens, the Jets are not afraid of a smaller, shiftier speed guy. Um, in fact, I think it's a great compliment when you have six foot three, 215 215-pound Denzel Mims. So again, we're kind of getting that yin and yang dynamic. Um, the Jets did get their new quarterback, so we got Mims, who's the big body guy. We're going to have Rondale Moore, who's the shiftier speed guy on the other end of that. Um, it's just kind of helping to build around what we have. Again, everything's kind of up in the air because I don't know who's coming in, how good of a job they're going to do, how good is Zach Wilson going to be, you know, what about the offensive line, the tight end, the play calling, the defense. There's so many questions. It's hard to project this is going to make us great. But in terms of really trying to just back to basics, right, build around your quarterback, it just feels like a good fit for the Jets. With the 28th pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Pittsburgh Steelers select... Najee Harris, running back, Alabama. I, I, you know, very few teams are as 
singularly focused as Pittsburgh Steelers fans wanting Najee Harris. And I get it. I, I do. I, I actually had the Steelers take Najee Harris and, and running backs in my earlier mocks, and um, I, I didn't actually get that much hate on it. I just didn't like doing it because I felt like there were so many other needs and running back is not you know, something that we necessarily need. But I think Steelers fans liked it even back then. I, I occasionally would have um, Travis Etienne go, who is still to this day rated way higher than Najee Harris on these boards. It hasn't even been close. But um, it's been consistent from Steelers fans. I love the pick of running back, but it has to be Najee Harris. So um, I tell you what, Steeler Nation is going to lose their mind if Najee Harris goes there because it has been unanimous from everything I've seen. No matter what I pick, it's not, nah, 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 just not. Just just sh- shut your mouth and do Najee Harris. It would be great. <laughs> okay, I mean, I don't disagree. Again, I'm just trying to keep our options open, I guess. But I'll just shut my mouth and Najee Harris. I get well. We'll just lock it in, man. But again, comment section if you disagree. If you want to go in a different direction, let me know. But I don't hate it. I mean, he's a, he's a great player. I, I think you guys need it. Let's just do it. I'm good with it. Let's let's roll. With the 30th pick, nope, 29th pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the New Orleans Saints select Zayvon Collins, linebacker, Tulsa. Um, I love Demario Davis, man. I, I I love what he's been able to do. I don't, it always gets me jacked up when guys that are getting up in age kind of just figure it out, right? Demario Davis kind of just turned it on at the latter portion of his career. There's several other guys that have kind of done that, and I, I just think that's very cool. But at the end of the day, again, it's it's a defense that is playing really really well, as I mentioned when I talked about the Bears a little bit ago. Um, and we just we got to keep that going. Demario Davis is not going to be around forever. We're going to need a replacement for him. And Zayvon Collins is a very, very talented linebacker. So uh, I think we were able to kind of keep things at a high level. Obviously, we got some questions at quarterback and what exactly we're going to do there. We could possibly go Kyle Trask. Again, based on where the board is today, Kyle Trask has fallen to about a mid-second round pick. So I don't want to take him at 29 when he's a value at about 45. I just, I'm not into that so much. Um, so again, we're, we're just going to take the less sexy pick. We're going to go Zayvon Collins to the Saints. With the 30th overall pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Buffalo Bills select Darian Kendrick, cornerback, Clemson. Um, I don't know if I've, I've made this pick before, Darian Kendrick, but look, I like Tredavious Everybody likes Tredavious. Very, very good football player, but kind of similar to what I said about Dallas. Um, The offense is really, really playing at a high level right now. Um, We could possibly try to do things to get the run game going as a compliment, but I really just want the defense to stay playing at a high level. Um, There's a lot of different directions to go. I've gone edge rush several times because, again, we've got one really talented edge rusher who's not going to be around very much longer. But... um, Ultimately, I want to focus on defense, and I don't know that there are too many positions that I'm just completely staying away from. Um, You know, when I look at the Buffalo Bills, again, I know a lot of people are going to get upset at uh, the fact that you already have Tredavious, but again, I I like the idea of having two really good cornerbacks because when you when you couple that with a not just a good offense, but the way in which you're good, right? Tennessee's good because they run the ball really well. You also pass quite well, but but Buffalo is just a big play machine. So the hard thing is going to be about Buffalo is once they start getting ahead, once Buffalo kind of gets that lead, you have to abandon the run. You have to start to pass. So I think for Buffalo, and, and it's different for different teams, I think the style of football that you guys are playing, um, I'm looking for edge rushers and corners more so than, than beefing up the middle of that defensive line. Because as much as, yeah, you want to be able to stop the run, look, if I'm up 14 points and you want to run the ball, you go right ahead. Because that ain't going to do it. You're going to have to pick up the pace. You're going to have to drop back and throw the ball. And you're going to have a hard time doing that in Buffalo. Because, again, we're going to stack cornerbacks. We're going to bring in some edge rushers. And we're just going to make sure that that if you want to dink and dunk and run the ball, you go right ahead. Hi. Good morning. Um, Darian Kendrick to the Buffalo Bills. With the 31st pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Green Bay Packers select Christian Barmore, defensive tackle, Alabama. I mean, look, I mean, the the Packers are playing really good football right now. Not only are they the number one offense in football, but the defense has been absolutely dominant in the second half of the, the season. 
Uh, the defensive backs are, I mean, in the second half of the season, again, safeties number one and number two in football. That's not a joke. Number one corner in football is Jair Alexander. So really, especially when you factor in the edge rushers are, you know, a little bit not quite as good as they were in 2019, but still talented. We really just want to beef up the defensive line a little bit. And, um, you know, that does several things. First of all, Mike Pettin is obsessed with defensive tackles. Uh, we went out and got Snacks Harris, and they tried to get him. They've been trying to get defensive tackle, defensive ta- Since he's been there, they do nothing but call for defensive tackles. He's obsessed with the position. It's massive to his scheme. We've got to get that. On top of that, it's going to help Kenny Clark. It's going to help the other edge rushers. It just helps everything, which then helps the, def- the defensive backs. I mean, it really just helps this team get to the point where the defense is competing to be better than the offense. And considering how good the offense is right now, I mean, it's 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 a, it's a good football team, ladies and gentlemen. It's a good football team. With the 32nd overall pick, the Super Bowl champion Kansas City Chiefs select Trey Smith, offensive guard, Tennessee. Again, nobody likes the interior stuff, but I'm I'm just looking at a team that has one guy locked up long term on the interior. Um, it's a it's a good offense, but as has been pointed out in the comments section, although the offense is better than the defense which makes you want to focus on the defense the offense is also in the biggest danger of regressing a little bit uh we're losing wide receivers um i don't know how many guys are getting re-signed but you look at sammy watkins byron pringle demarcus robinson and Dieter uh at wide receiver all free agents after this year you look at running backs daryl williams Le'Veon bell anthony sherman and damian williams after this year obviously we have clyde edwards elaire but it's still kind of like we're losing a lot of bodies and then the offensive line um on the interior alone, free agents this year, Wiley, Osemele, Wisniewski, Reeder, Kilgore, and Remmers, all free agents. That leaves uh, Duvernay, who I just pick one of his names and say it, um, he's in the final year of his contract, which isn't great. Allegretti is the only guy locked up kind of long term. And then even if you look at the tackles, Schwartz, Fisher, and Rankin are all in the final years of their contract. It just, it's scary. And we have to start addressing it, right? Even if we bring back some of these guys, none of these guys are here for the next, how you know, five years. In in five years, are they all gone? So we got to start the process of building this up. So this is this is our start. We're going to take Trey Smith at pick thirty-two. That's gonna do it, folks. This was a a battle, man. Um, again, with the the video quality the headphone issues i've recorded this one and a half time my kids are awake they're coming down here it's it's i barely got out of this one scot-free but um we're gonna power through it again please check out that join button if you have any interest in supporting what i'm doing here and trying to help up the quality as you can see my my things getting everything's all messed up it's it's gonna be fine uh please like the video it really helps me out a lot um share it around tell your friends and family and you know just if you want go to grandma's house and just pull up her ipad and push play and just be like don't worry about it grandma just leave it alone i'll take all the views i can get um otherwise i i got nothing else for you um i I appreciate you being here take care